On this Pentecost Day, I want to speak directly to every Catholic in our Diocese of Christchurch. Because Pentecost is the birthday of the Church, and because I know that we're at a significant moment of great challenge and opportunity here in our Diocese. Fifty days after the resurrection of Jesus, his disciples were huddled together because they were fearful. They'd suffered and struggled and they felt vulnerable and much that they had relied on had passed away. But now they sensed that something new and wonderful was happening. In our Diocese of Christchurch, we've been through a lot in recent years. There have been the earthquakes, the terrorist attacks. In all, we experience vulnerability and families and friendships and employment and financial security. Naturally, these human vulnerabilities are reflected in the structures of our diocesan family, in parishes and schools and chaplaincies. And this is what's prompting me to speak to you directly today. Many of you have trusted me as your bishop with an insight into your own lives. Even when we meet for a moment or two at Mass or at a function or in the street, you tell me of your hopes and anxieties in your family and your work and your parishes and schools and in the missions and structures of the diocese. Every day you send me emails with details of your concerns, often your advice for me. I've discovered that the life of a bishop is one of continual consultation with every conversation giving information and insight and every day I take what I hear and see and perceive to prayer for you and for those you love. At Pentecost, the disciples of Jesus became apostles, and a bishop in the Catholic Church, already with every Christian a disciple, is appointed to also be an apostle. And this is a responsibility I take very seriously, and at my ordination 15 months ago, I publicly said yes to this responsibility of apostolic leadership in this local church of the Diocese of Christchurch. In your own lives, every one of you makes necessary and significant changes in your family and workplaces as needs and circumstances change. In a similar way as a bishop, the people, the parishes, the schools and the chaplaincy of the diocese are my concern because I'm appointed to leadership in this diocese and family. It would be irresponsible for me to ignore the fact that many of the existing structures in our diocese, I'm thinking of buildings and parish boundaries and our methods of offering our faith in parishes and schools, haven't been as effective as we have hoped they would be in presenting to our families and to the world the beauty and the vitality of life with Jesus Christ within the Catholic Church. Over the past decade in Christchurch, the earthquakes causing the loss of churches and schools, presbyteries and parish meeting spaces has brought a new urgency to our planning and an unprecedented opportunity to get things right as we move into the future. Therefore, with open minds and hearts and knowing that the Spirit of Jesus is with us, I invite you to accept that it's unhelpful for us to maintain the number of buildings and parishes that we currently have in the city. The regions of our diocese have made considerable sacrifices in recent decades, and now there's a need to be for significant restructuring in Christchurch City. Priests of all ages tell me that they want to be good priests of Jesus Christ, focused first on their calling, that is to be priests, available to the people as doctors of the soul, giving their time and energy not to building maintenance and financial administration, but for the celebration of Mass and the sacraments, living among the people with time to visit and chat, providing in their parish churches a refuge, a sanctuary of peace and a place of prayer for busy parishioners and for anyone who might just drop in. And this is consistent with what I hear from you, the people of the diocese. You want your priests to be good and holy priests who help you grow in your relationships with God. And you know too that there are many aspects of parish in diocesan administration that is rightly your calling, your competence, and your mission. So I now invite Catholic people in the diocese to join me on a new adventure in faith, as today I pre present a fresh vision centered on our personal relationship with Jesus Christ 
and providing a renewed infrastructure of parish boundaries and buildings as we enter a new phase of Catholic life in our diocese. I ask you to join me in that adventure with vibrancy that marked the life of the followers of Jesus in those years after Pentecost. Rather than have small parishes absorbed into larger parishes, which has been an earlier model of cooperation, I believe the time is right for us all throughout Christchurch City to experience a new beginning, giving us the opportunity to create and build what is needed where it is needed. When I consider such a clear canvas, I think of those first disciples of Jesus who moved into an uncertain future with nothing but Jesus, building afresh what they needed where and when it became necessary. Therefore, it's my proposal to create from our 12 existing city parishes five new, stronger and even more vibrant parishes, each centred on a new or redeveloped parish church with the necessary offices and meeting rooms and with priests living together on these sites in communities of two or three, serving the new parishes supported by parish teams. It's important to understand that every new city parish will in fact be a new parish. And while this may involve the amalgamating of existing parishes on one site, some of which are current parish uh, sites, these five proposed parishes will be new entities with new names, so that these five new parishes can be positioned exactly where they need to be across the city. I've had to accept that some of our largest church sites will no longer be required in this new parish structure. I am proposing that these be the new city parishes. A parish in the north, based on Main North Road at the current St Joseph's site. A parish in the south, based at the current Our Lady of Assumption, Hoon Hay site. A parish in the east, based at St Anne's Woolston site. And a parish in the west, based at Our Lady of Victory site. The Cathedral Parish will be the fifth of these parishes. We're stepping ahead on the pathway to eternal life, and that has been the journey of 2,000 years of Catholic Christians, and indeed the journey of this Diocese of Canterbury, Westland and the Chatham Islands. Their example and their prayer gives us confidence and we know too that when we turn to God with dependent faith, God doesn't miss the opportunity to work powerfully in us. As you leave Mass today, you'll receive a copy of my pastoral letter outlining both the vision and the details of how this is to be implemented with new parish boundaries. I know that many of you will find my proposal challenging, but again, I've learned from what you've shared of your own family and work lives that change, while not always enthusiastically welcomed, leads to a revitalised focus on what is essential. And for us as disciples of Jesus Christ, it is Christ who is central. There's a link on the diocesan website to more detailed information regarding what we're calling our faith, our future vision. If you'd like to receive every update, visit the website and subscribe to receive emails. I do want to hear your feedback on my proposal, but I'd say don't write or email anything for a couple of weeks because often our instant reactions are not our best ones. Give yourself some time for this proposal to percolate. Chat with others, listen to different perspectives and then send me your personal and or group responses. There will be opportunities for people to have written and also online feedback when this is presented. And finally, I ask you to pray with me an ancient prayer to the Holy Spirit, which has traditionally been prayed by any person or community knowing their need for God in their life. Please carry it with you on the prayer cards distributed today. Pray it to begin and end your day at every class or meeting and whenever you need to be reminded that God is with you. Learn it by heart and use it as a prayer for your own personal needs and for your families and friends and pray it for me, your bishop, and for our diocese, which carries the privileged name of Christ Church. So I invite us now, let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful 
and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 